What about you? Mm. Hard drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, it's just, I'm just, it's just, it's just I, I don't know. I don't know. Number three, we do a 69, if that's what it's still called. Uh, I don't know. Um, four, me on top. Five, doggy style. Well, that all sounds very achievable. Sex positivity being a phrase that has sort of taken over the world that I don't really understand. Sex positivity is just about another version of intimacy and connection and, and, and seeing that on screen as something that is a part of life. I would use the word authenticity mm. rather than positivity. You know, to be authentic in yourself is extremely hard. We're also angry at the moment, and it's very hard to find the quieter and more subtle and more empathic ways into ourselves. The real key to human life is, is a kind of access to one's authentic nature and where pleasure resides, you know, because it doesn't only reside in our loins. You know, it resides in our stomachs, in our hearts, in our minds. And when all of those fields as it were, of re resonance, are confluent and have come together, that's when you can really feel alive in your sex, your sexuality. What would you most desire? I mean, desires are never mundane. Um, to have sex tonight um, with you. That's about it, really, for the moment. I think it's a really individual experience, and it starts with you being vulnerable and honest to yourself, which I think you see in the film, you know, you see a woman get, get giving a chance to, to have a, you know, a, a relationship with her own intimacy and desire. Mm. So I think that, that to me is positive. It's a positive thing to, you know, to explore that for yourself. I was raised to believe that sex is a really important part of life and it is something that can bring us great joy. Um, so I find it odd that we steep it in a whole lot of shame and, um, and are very hidden about it, shy about it, when it's something that, you know, so many of us participate in, do you know? <laughs> I hope. I think that as women we're not raised to believe that we should want anything other than what we've been kind of assigned. Myself as, a, as you know, growing up as a woman, I found it hard to even think about what it was that I wanted. People would say, you know, what do you want? And I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between what I was supposed to want um, or what someone else wanted and, you know, what I truly wanted. And I think that's because we have, you know, complete competing or conflicting desires. And it's often very strange, which is why we are, are so beset by shame. And shame is, is the most toxic human emotion there is. So we hope that this film is something of an antidote If you're talking about letting go sexually, for me anyway, it would always be time. Just give yourself time. I think that's true of me anyway. What about you? Mm. Hard drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, it's just, I'm just, it's just, it's just I, I don't know. I don't know. Experience, I think, is important because everyone's mm. individual mm. and everyone has different things to let go of. That's true. So I think it's just about knowing yourself and trying to, and just being open to discovering what those things are that you need to let go. It involves us as individuals and our completeness and our experience. And that's, I think, the task to start engaging with all of that so that we can get closer to that freedom. I remember Emma said this great thing, um, you know, there was an idea that uh, to do a naked scene, everyone would be there on set, the closed set. The actors would come in in their robes and just at the last second they would disrobe after everything had been done and then they would do the scene and that was going to protect them. I mean, for one, that's just really difficult for a cinematographer and, and for everybody there to do that, I think. Um, but secondly, I think it's really, it perpetuates an idea of shame about our bodies. And Emma was really clear, everyone else should leave, we should come onto the set we can find our way, disrobe, feel like we're comfortable and it's our space. And then people can come in and, and we can make the movie, you know, or make the scene. To me, that was exactly right, because it's saying, this isn't something to be ashamed of. This is my body, I'm here. To get into character, I need to be here. And then we make the work that we need to make.
one being uh, introduced to the kind of depth and vastness of sex work and the possibility that it gives is incredible and the people who are out there and finding a vocation in it is incredibly inspiring particularly knowing that they are doing something that government and the world uh, make illegal so that they're fighting against a whole legality issue just think how civilized it could be if it was just available to all and there's no shame attached there's no judgment you want sex and you're frustrated you can't get it for whatever reason. You're shy, you're unwell, you're grieving, you're physically struggling. So you just hire someone like me. It's all regulated and safe for you, for me, better for everyone. And I help you or I pleasure you. We love to put women into the category of, you know, mother or lover or, you know, something that is a role for somebody else. And so this is one of those great movies that is about all of those things, but it features a, a character who has been part of the problem in many ways. You know, she's not a hero. You want to talk about my mother, really? Well, you brought her up. Well, now I'm dropping it. But seriously? Uh, she doesn't know. You know, this looks so sexy on you. What does she think you do? If I tell you, can we drop it? Because you really do look good in this. Uh, I promise. In a way, Nancy's journey took her sort of further than I've ever got with my body. I couldn't stand in front of a mirror and look at my body without judgment. I just couldn't do it. It's not something that will ever be available to me. Because, you know, from, from very early on, I've been told by all the images that surround me and everything that has ever gone into my, my young forming brain, and anyone with, a, with young girls, daughters, will know this, that dissatisfaction starts to be drip-fed into the child's brain very, very early on, not by parents, by everything in society, everything. So, you know, either you're aware of that or you're not, and you take steps to prevent it or you don't, but it's fantastically destructive. I mean, it's the thing that I'm still most angry about. So I am, as it were, constantly hobbled by that. And Nancy got further than I will ever get. <laughs>